Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mindful Homestead. My name is Jack. Today is the day where we are going to be going down and setting up the electric fence for our pigs that we run out on pasture. Every year up until now, we have run our pigs on what I would kind of describe as temporary electric fencing. We've, we've done different things, but it's always been two strands of an electrified medium. We've used poly tape, we've used poly wire, we've now settled on power wire which is easy to work with, but still carries a really good shock for our pigs. And while the project for this summer is to get a permanent woven wire fence up on what we're calling the right-hand pasture, the left-hand pasture where we're gonna be running our pigs this year is still going to get our temporary fencing. Just as a note, I will leave a link in the description to everything we use for our electric fencing for pigs. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna head down there. I'm gonna get the fencing installed for the pigs and depending what time I get it done, we're gonna let them out and I wanna take you with me for that today. T-post pounder. I think the last time I used it was over here. Aha! From when I hammered in the, uh, the trellis. I don't know what I would do without Jackie. She always knows where I leave things. So we train our pigs to electric fence by being inside the cattle panel enclosure that they're in now. This year it's 16 by 32. Uh, in years past we've just done 16 by 16, but figured to make it a little bigger for them this year. Those two strands of poly wire inside here mimic the two strands of poly wire that we're gonna use on the outside, both in the manner of using T-posts at the corners and areas where we need extra support, and then the white kind of plastic posts in the middle that you saw me loading up. Both the wire itself and the posts become a psychological barrier for the pigs when they are out on pasture and there's not really anything keeping them in besides the notion that they don't wanna cross where that electric wire is because they'll get shocked. Where things are gonna differ a little bit this year is that I'm not going to give them this entire pasture at the same time as I've done in years past. One, because I've got stuff stored over there uh, the fencing supplies and I don't want the pigs getting into it and getting them all messy. But two, I want to be able to break this down into chunks where when the pigs are done with one specific area, I want to be able to come through with the tractor, rake it out, make it nice for them and then let them back onto it. So I'm going to give them about from where their enclosure is, I'm looking at uh, right back there, about from that enclosure to where I'm standing right now, I'll turn east and then I'll run it up a little ways and then out and I'm not going to give them the wood chip pile yet uh, because I want to take that wood chip pile and I actually want to spread it out through here and have the pigs work it in. 
So I'm not gonna give that to them straight away. Before we get too far into this video, Homesteaders of New England fall gathering tickets are live now, September 9th and 10th, 2023 in Greenfield, New Hampshire. We've got a bunch of great speakers coming out this year. Morgan from Goldshaw Farm is coming down again. Tom Watkins from McMurray Hatchery. We've got Troy McClung from the Pasture Pig Podcast, Talking Pigs, and a whole bunch of other great speakers and workshops and things that you're gonna wanna check out. Tickets are only 25 bucks for the entire weekend, Saturday and Sunday. I'll leave a link in the description, but it's easy enough to remember. Just go to newenglandhomesteaders.com. All the other info is there. You can get your tickets right on the website. I'm really excited to be putting on a homesteaders festival or conference that is geared specifically toward New England farming and homesteading. So go down below, get your tickets now, and then come back and finish the rest of this video. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out into the area where we had the pigs last year. I'm gonna retrieve some of my T-posts, not all of them, because I wanna leave some um, as markers for where we're putting the new fence. We will start right here at the charger. That'll be our first post and uh, off we'll go from there. Once you've got your corner posts all laid out, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is go back through with your plastic posts and literally just fill in. Put, put as many as you feel you need to kind of maintain a contour of the land. Uh, if you've got any sharp dips, put one in. If you've got a, a sharp little rise, put one on top of that to hold the wire up off the ground. You know, your, your T posts are gonna be your main anchor points at the corners, but your white plastic posts or black plastic posts or whatever you choose to use, those are gonna be your kind of contouring posts along everything. You might have to walk your fence line a couple times. We're not using like a, a mason line or a string or anything here to make sure we're perfectly straight. We don't have to be perfectly straight. It's just an electric fence for pigs. But you do want it to be straight enough so that the tension on your electric line is not gonna pull your step and posts in either one way because you've only got like maybe four or five inches of post in the ground holding everything up and in line. One thing I do every year, because it's cheap insurance, is I'll replace the insulators. I'm far away from the camera right now. You probably can't see these, but, but your insulators on your T-posts are taking a little bit of strain. It's worth swapping them out. They get brittle over a couple years. So every year for like the 10 bucks a bag it costs, um, I'll swap them out. I'm gonna give everyone a tip out there too if you're using electric fence, uh, T-posts for electric fence and you're using these plastic insulators. In addition to changing them every year, even if you're using poly wire or power wire, like a thin gauge, um, which is what these are designed for, don't use them. Use these, the ones designed for poly tape. And the reason why on that, these in the corner, they're not locking. There's nothing here. If the wire slips out from underneath, there's nothing to keep it from slipping off the other one and, and falling down. Whereas with these, you can see, you have this space in the bottom here, which is meant for just kind of expansion. Of the, of the insulator and your poly tape is supposed to go up here, but you can actually open that up and put your poly wire down into it and then close this. So there's no way your poly wire is gonna come out unless it manages to snake its way all the way up and then this comes unlocked. So these, in my opinion, are way better for poly wire and poly tape. Once your posts are all in the ground, the next thing you're gonna do is grab your spool of wire and um, get to get to laying out your fence A 
aside from any small adjustments that you may have to make on your specific setup, that's it. All I have to do now is take the power off of the inside of this, because we don't care about electrifying that anymore, and move it to the outside perimeter fence, let the pigs out, and kind of keep an eye on them. You ready to come out? Let's see, they love ferns. So let's see if we can tempt them out with some of that. I'm gonna go grab a bucket of food. All the other pigs are looking at you like, hey, where did he go? Oh, look who's here. Let's just uh, dump it right here. Oh, there we go. There's another one. And three, four, five. There we go, see? That's pretty nice. Guys, we're all the way over there. Cool. We just got one more. Come on, let's go. This is really what it's all about for me. The first day that we get these pigs out on pasture is kind of a magical feeling. It's, uh, you know, we raise them in that behind me that you see to get them started off and trained on electric. But really, I want to see pigs doing the stuff that you see those pigs doing behind me. Chewing grass, rolling around, rubbing on my leg. I'm a scratching post. That's what I feel pigs should be doing. What do you think, Madison? Yeah. Yeah, she got a little spit up on her face too. This is your first time seeing the pigs. Well, there you have it. The 2023 Mindful Homestead pigs are out on pasture and we gave you a little bit of insight into how you can get your pigs out on pasture if you're raising them. Even if you don't have a, a big, expensive, um, tedious to set up permanent fencing solution. Is a permanent fencing solution for pigs good? Yes. Do I recommend eventually setting one up if you're gonna be raising pigs? Of course, which is why we're doing it. But if you're just looking to raise a few pigs, you're looking to move them from place to place year after year, and you don't wanna get involved in a, a big fencing install, two strands of electric fence, um, some plastic step-in posts and T-posts at the corners, a decent enough charger, that'll work just fine for you. If you have more questions about fencing for pigs, definitely feel free to leave a comment down below and I will answer it as best I can. If you haven't raised pigs before and this video has inspired you to think about raising your own, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Big shout out to our patrons over on the Patreon channel. We couldn't do this without you, so thanks to them. And for everyone else, as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.